Special Olympics and really came out of uh, my observation of my sister Rosemary. And I can remember my mother saying that there was no place, say 45 years ago, where you could go. And there was nobody to talk to. Somewhere in that love of your own sister, an enormous anxiety and, and anger at the way the culture was treating her, uh, my mother uh, developed her revolutionary passion to change. Mother looked around and she has a brother who's president, another brother's attorney general, another one who's a U.S. senator. And I think she looked and saw that her sister didn't have the same opportunities and people like her sister didn't have the same opportunities. And she got pissed. Eunice Shriver turned her anger into a call to action. She talked to every expert she could find on the subject of people with intellectual disabilities. She visited institutions where people were warehoused like prisoners. There was dirt, there was disease. Nobody even thought of these kids. The mentally disabled were forgotten, were shunned, closeted, uh, they embarrassed people. The shame was so powerful that almost every family uh, would have hidden these people. And that was the world that Mrs. Shriver stepped into and said, no, 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 mm -mm. that's not the way this is going to be anymore. She's the only woman in the room, and she's talking about people that have been isolated and forgotten forever in this country. That takes some chutzpah. Ask not what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. I have today announced uh, my intention to appoint a panel of outstanding scientists doctors and others to prescribe a program of action in the field of mental retardation. JFK signed a bill to commit federal funding for the treatment of people with intellectual disabilities. It remains perhaps his most important piece of legislation spurred on by his sister Eunice, starting a day camp on her back lawn for people with intellectual disabilities in 1962. Campers were coming from institutions. They had never been in a pool. Many of the kids that came uh, had never seen grass, had never been out in a playing field. Doctors would routinely refer to these people as imbeciles or idiots or morons or hopeless or invalid. It's almost as though people with intellectual disabilities were the 20th century lepers of the culture because they were too different. They were scary. They were almost infectious. She opens up her backyard and says, come here. 1968, just seven weeks after she lost her brother Bobby. A hundred spectators and about a thousand athletes from Canada and the United States gathered for a day of peaceful, pride-instilling, self-empowering competition. Special Olympics was born. Before Mayor Daly left Soldier Field, he turned to the woman who had pulled it off. Eunice, he said, the world will never be the same. 